Kudaram Bose, also spelled Kudaram Bozu or Kudaram Basu, the 3rd of December 1889 to the 11th of August 1908, was a Bengali Indian revolutionary who opposed British rule. Kudaram, along with Prafula Chaki, attempted to assassinate a British judge, Magistrate Kingsford, by throwing bombs in the carriage they suspected the man was in. Magistrate Kingsford, however, was seated in a different carriage, resulting in the deaths of two British women. Prafula committed suicide before arrest. Kudaram was arrested and trialed for the murder of the two women, ultimately being sentenced to death. At the time of his hanging, Kudaram was 18 years, 8 months 8 days old, making him one of the youngest revolutionaries in India. Mahatma Gandhi denounced the violence, lamenting the deaths of the two innocent women. He stated, That the Indian people will not win their freedom through these methods. Bal Gangadhar Tilak, however, in his newspaper Kesari, defended the two young men and called for immediate Swaraj. This was followed by the immediate arrest of Tilak by the British colonial government on charges of sedition. <laughs> Early life Kudaram Bose was born on December 3, 1889 in the small village named Habibpur, situated under the Keshpur police station in the Midnapur district of West Bengal. His father was a tehsildar in the Nirajol. Kudaram was the fourth child in a family of three daughters. His parents, Trelakyanath Bose and Lakshmipriya Devi had two sons before the birth of Kudaram but both of them died prematurely. Following the traditional customs prevalent in the culture, the newborn child was symbolically sold to his eldest sister in exchange of three handful of food grains locally known as cud, in an attempt to save him from dying at an early age. This way he acquired the name, Kudaram. He lost his mother when he was six year old. His father died a year after. Aparupa Roy, his elder sister, brought him to her house at Hatgacha village under the Daspur police station. Aparupa's husband, Amritalal Roy, got him admitted to Tamluk's Hamilton High School. In 1902 and 1903, Sri Aurobindo and Sister Nivedita visited Midnapur. They held a series of public lectures and private session with the existing revolutionary groups for freedom. Kudaram, a teenager, was an active participant in the discussions about the revolution. Apparently, he joined Anushilan Samiti, and came into contact with the network of Barindra Kumar Ghosh of Calcutta. He became a volunteer at the age of 15, and was arrested for distributing pamphlets against the British rule in India. At the young age of 16, Kudaram took part in planting bombs near the police stations and targeted government officials. <laughs> Revolutionary activities In 1907, Barindra Kumar Ghosh arranged for his associate, Hemchandra Kanungo, to visit Paris in order to learn bomb making techniques from Nicholas Safransky, a Russian revolutionary in exile. After returning to Bengal, Hemchandra and Barindra Kumar collaborated again and selected Douglas Kingsford as the next target. Kingsford was the chief magistrate of the Presidency Court of Alipur, and had overseen the trials of Bhupendranath Dutta and other editors of Gigantar, sentencing them to rigorous imprisonment. Gigantar itself responded with defiant editorials, leading to five more prosecutions that left it in financial ruins by 1908. These prosecutions brought the paper more publicity, and helped to disseminate the Anushilan Samiti's ideology of revolutionary nationalism. According to Shukla Sanyal, revolutionary terrorism as an ideology began to win support among a significant populace in Bengal, tacitly even if not overt Kingsford also earned notoriety among nationalists when he ordered the whipping of a young Bengali boy, Sushil Sen, for participating in the protests that followed the Gigantar trial. As such, during his posting as the chief magistrate of the Presidency Court of Alipur, Kingsford became unpopular for passing harsh and cruel sentences on young political workers. He also inflicted corporal punishments on such workers. Topic: <inaudible> Kingsford assassination attempts. First attempt the first attempt to kill Kingsford was in the form of a book bomb constructed by Hemchandra. An empty tin of Cadbury cocoa was packed with a pound of picric acid and three detonators. This was packed into a hollowed section of Herbert Broom's commentaries on the common law and delivered wrapped in a brown paper to Kingsford's house by Paresh Malik, a young revolutionary. 
Kingsford placed the unopened package in his shelf to examine later. By March 1908, fearful of the judge's safety, he was promoted to the district judge position and transferred by the government to Muzaffarpur, Bihar. With him went his furniture, library and the book bomb. The reconnaissance at Muzaffarpuranushilan Samiti persisted in their attempt to kill Kingsford. In April, a two-man reconnaissance team visited Muzaffarpur, which included Prafula Chaki. On their return, Hemchandra provided the bomb, which was composed of six ounces of dynamite, a detonator and a black powder fuse. Prafula Chaki returned to Muzaffarpur with a new boy, Kudaram Bose. Police suspicion the activities of Aurobindo Ghosh, Barindra Ghosh and their associates raised suspicion. The Calcutta police became aware about the plans on Kingsford's life. Commissioner F.L. Halliday alerts to the superintendent of police in Muzaffarpur were ignored. However, four men were assigned to guard the magistrate's house. In the meantime, Kudaram Bose and Prafula Chaki adopted the name of Haran Sarkar and Dinesh Chandra Roy respectively, and took up residence in a charitable inn run by Kishorimo and Bandopati. In the ensuing days, the duo monitored the activities and daily routine of their target. The two revolutionaries successfully hid their identities for over three weeks. The SID officer from Calcutta returned with a letter from the superintendent of Muzaffarpur, Armstrong, that the duo had not arrived. On the evening of 29 April, Kudaram and Prafula were in place to execute their plans. Pretending to be schoolboys, they surveyed the Muzaffarpur Park situated opposite the British Club, frequented by Kingsford. They were noticed by a constable. Kingsford assassination attempt at Muzaffarpur on the fateful day, Kingsford and his wife was playing bridge with the daughter and wife of Pringle Kennedy, a British barrister. They decided to head home around 8.30 p.m. Kingsford and his wife were in a carriage identical to the one carrying Kennedy and his family. The Kennedy ladies had to pass from the compound of the house occupied by Kingsford. As their carriage reached the eastern gate of the compound, Kudaram and Prafula ran towards the carriage and threw the bombs into the carriage. A loud explosion ensued and the carriage was taken to Kingsford's house. The carriage was shattered and the Kennedy ladies sustained terrible injuries. Miss Kennedy died within an hour and Mrs. Kennedy passed away on 2 May of sustained injuries. Escape Kudaram and Prafula went their own way to escape capture. By the midnight, the whole town knew of the incident and by early morning, armed policemen were stationed on all the rail route to keep an eye on every passenger. By morning, Kudaram had walked 25 miles and he reached a station called Waini. As he asked for a glass of water at a tea stall, he was confronted by two armed constables, Fateh Singh and Shio Prashad Singh, who immediately suspected something upon seeing his dusty feet, and his exhausted and perspiring appearance. After a couple of questions, their suspicion became stronger, and they decided to detain Kudaram. Kudaram started struggling with the two men, and immediately, one of the two hidden revolvers fell out. Before Kudaram could use the other one to fire on the constables, one of them held him from behind in a bear hug. The much younger and lightly built Kudaram had no more chance of defense or escape. On his person were found 37 rounds of ammunition, 30 rupees in cash, a railway map and a page of the rail timetable. The fate of Kudaram was sealed forever. The Waini station is now known as Kudaram Bose Pusa station. On the other hand, Prafula had traveled long arduous hours. Around midday, a civil named Trigonasharan Ghosh noticed a young way coming his way. He was aware of the bomb blast and realized that Prafula was the other revolutionary. Ghosh decided to save his life, and let him bathe, eat, and rest in his house. He arranged for Prafula to return to Kolkata the same night. He boarded a train from Samastipur for Mokamaghat, and continue his onward journey with a train to Howrah. A sub-inspector in the British police, Nandalal Banerjee, was travelling in the same compartment. He struck a conversation and realised Prafula to be the other revolutionary. When Prafula got down at the Shimaraga station to drink water, Banerjee sent a telegram to the Muzaffarpur police station. Banerjee tried to apprehend Prafula at the Mokamaghat station. Prafula tried to fight his way through with his revolver but in the end, down to his last bullet, he shot himself in the mouth. On 1 May, the handcuffed Kudaram was brought from to Muzaffarpur. The entire town descended at the police station to take a look at the teenage boy surrounded by a team of armed policemen. Kudaram was taken to the house of the district magistrate, Mr. Woodman. The English Daily, The Statesman, wrote on the following day, 2 May 1908, the railway station was crowded to see the boy. 
a mere boy of 18 or 19 years old, who looked quite determined. He came out of a first-class compartment and walked all the way to the Phaeton, kept for him outside, like a cheerful boy who knows no anxiety. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 on taking his seat the boy lustily cried Vandamataram. Kudaram had to give a statement or declaration to the magistrate. He took full responsibility of the assassination, unknown that Prafula was dead. Only after Kudaram finished giving his statement, the body of Prafula reached Muzaffarpur. Kudaram realized that lying would go in vain. He identified the body of Prafula and the British also received details from the encounter with Sub-Inspector Banerjee. Instead of believing Kudaram, the British thought it more proper to cut off the head from the body and send it to Kolkata for better confirmation. <laughs> First hearing The historical trial started on 21 May 1908, presided by Judge Korndoff, Nathuni Prasad and Janak Prasad in the jury. Along with Kudaram, two others were tried for assisting the revolutionaries in their mission Maritiyunjay Chakraborty and Kishorimohan Bandopati, who had accommodated Kudaram Bose and Prafula Chaki in his Dharmashala for their mission. Maritiyunjay died during the trial, and subsequently, the trail of Kishorimohan was separated from that of Kudaram. Manik and Bainadbihari Majumdar were the prosecutors for the British government. Lawyers Kalidas Basu, Upendranath Sen, and Shitranath Bandopati took up Kudaram's defence. They were joined later in the trial by Kalkamal Sen, Najendra Lal Lahiri, and Satischandra Chakraborty, all of them fighting the case without any fees, fighting for their country. On 23 May, Kudaram resubmitted his statement to Magistrate E.W. Breadhoud, denying any involvement or responsibility in any aspect or stage of the entire mission and operation down to the bombing. Initially, Kudaram was not ready to sign this statement, but did so after persuasion from his lawyers. On 13 June, the scheduled date for the verdict and sentence, the judge and the prosecutors received an anonymous letter of warning, which told them that there was one more bomb coming for them from Kolkata, and that henceforth, it will be the Biharis, and not the Bengalis, who are going to kill them. On the other hand, it made the defense lawyers more confident as the letter was a proof there could be other masterminds and executors of the Muzaffarpur bombing other than Kudaram, and that along with Kudaram's age, should make the judge deliver a sentencing other than death. But, to the disappointment to all, the judge pronounced the death sentence for Kudaram. Kudaram's immediate and spontaneous response was to smile. The judge, surprised, asked Kudaram whether he had understood the meaning of the pronounced sentence. Kudaram replied that he surely had. When the judge asked him again whether he had anything to say, in front of a packed audience, Kudaram replied with the same smile that if he could be given some time, he could teach the judge the skill of bomb-making. By then, the judge was instructing the police to escort the boy out of the courtroom. As per the legal system, Kudaram had seven days to appeal to the high court. Kudaram refused to appeal. However, after some persuasion by his counselors, with the logic that if he receives a life sentence instead of getting hanged because of this appeal, he would live to serve his nation once free and he would have age on his side when that happens. Kudaram finally agreed, in a detached manner, to go along with his defense team. <laughs> Second hearing The High Court hearing took place on 8 July 1908. Narendra Kumar Basu came to Kudaram's defense, and concentrated all his legal skills and experience on this case to save a boy who had overnight become a wonder and a hero for the whole country. He challenged the verdict of the session court by saying that the judging was not according to law and was flawed. He reasoned that according to Article 164 of the Penal Code, the accused is required to submit his statement in front of a first-class magistrate, which Mr. Woodman was not, and moreover, during the first statement Kudaram was not told anything of the person's identity and position. Secondly, pointed out Basu, the Article 364 requires that all questions to the accused be made in the mother tongue of the same, and all answers from the accused in his mother tongue be documented verbatim in that language, but which was done in English in Kudaram's case. Moreover, Kudaram's signature was required to be given on the statement on the same date and at the time of the statement in the presence of the magistrate, but in reality, Kudaram was made to sign the day after, and in front of a different person, who was an additional magistrate. 
Lastly, since such a statement are by definition required to be totally voluntary, with the magistrate being sure that it was so, there was no proof that Kudaram was allowed to give a voluntary statement without any direct or indirect manipulation after his capture. Lastly, Narendra Kumar Basu said that Prafula aka Dinesh, the name used in the trial, was stronger than Kudaram was, and he was the bomb expert among the two of them. Thus, it is highly likely that the actual thrower of the bomb was Dinesh. Further, Prafula's suicide on the verge of capture only reinforces the possibility of his being the actual thrower of the bombs. After the defense, it was announced by the two British judges that the final verdict would be passed on 13 July 1908. Judgment <inaudible> 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 As Kudaram was the only of the two alive, his lone statement of a two-man team was the foundation for the entire case. Since all the legal arguments put forth by Narendra Kumar Basu were believed to be technically correct, it was hoped that, for the sake of the law—about which the British prided themselves ad infinitum—Kudaram's life would, at least, be spared. But, on the historical day, the British judges confirmed the conviction and sentence, and dismissed the appeal. Last appeal As a final attempt, an appeal was made to the Governor-General to overrule the death sentence for Kudaram. The appeal was summarily turned down. On the contrary, the order came to carry out the death sentence latest by of August 1908. Kolkata erupted in intense protest from the entire student community. The streets of Kolkata started to be choked up with processions all, at the same time, for several days. Execution On the 11th of August, the region around the prison became packed with a swelling crowd before the scheduled time, 6 a.m. People holding flower garlands filled up the front rows of the crowd. Upendranath Sen, the lawyer journalist of the Bengali News Daily, Bengali who was close to Kudaram, reports having reached the venue by 5 a.m., in a car with all the necessary funerary arrangements and clothes. After the hanging, the funeral procession went through the city, with police guards holding back the crowd all along the central artery street. The people kept throwing their flowers on the body as the carriage passed by. The Amrita Bazaar Patrika, one of the prominent dailies of that era, carried the story of the hanging the next day, on 12 August. Under the headline, Kudaram's end, died cheerful and smiling. The newspaper wrote, Kudaram's execution took place at 6 a.m. this morning. He walked to the gallows firmly and cheerfully and even smiled when the cap was drawn over his head. An established British newspaper, The Empire, wrote, Kudaram Bose was executed this morning. It is alleged that he mounted the scaffold with his body erect. He was cheerful and smiling. The Kesari, nationalist Marathi newspaper, observed on 26 May 1908, "...neither the Jubilee murder of 1897, nor the reported tampering of the Sikh regiments had produced so much commotion, and the English public opinion seems inclined to regard birth of the bomb in India at the most extraordinary event since the mutiny at 1857." The Bengali poet Qazi Nasrul Islam wrote a poem to honour him. A statement made by Kudaram Bose In his own words, Kudaram made a statement which was undated while under arrest, recorded by the special branch of the police, before he was hanged. I was naughty in my childhood. But after I entered Midnapur Collegiate School, a change overtook me. Legacy Kudaram Bose is remembered through his legacy. Kudaram Bose Central College, it was established in 1965 as an undergraduate college in Kolkata, West Bengal, India. It offers only courses in arts and commerce. It is affiliated with the University of Calcutta. Shahid Kudaram Station, a metro railway station near Garia in Kolkata. Shahid Kudaram Bose Hospital, a hospital in BT Road near Kamarhati Municipality. 
Khudaram Bose Memorial Central Jail, the Muzaffarpur Jail, where the freedom fighter was incarcerated and hanged on the 11th of August 1908, is renamed thus. Sahid Khudaram Sicha Prangan, it is a university campus for postgraduate studies of University of Calcutta, Kolkata. It is also known as Alipur Campus. Kudaram Anushilan Kendra It is located adjacent to the Nataji Subhash Chandra Bose Indoor Stadium in Kolkata. Kudaram Bose Pusa Railway Station Sahid Kudaram College at Kamakayagori, Alipurdur, W.B. Films <laughs> 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 Over the years, Kudaram Bose and his journey has been represented in multiple films. Main Kudaram Bose Hun Kudaram Bose, a documentary. <laughs>